Hi folks, welcome to Edge Parts and Performance Methanol Madness and uh, what a busy weekend it was at Ruapuna Speedway, we'll talk about that later on. No AJ tonight, he's on a flight uh, all the way over to Canada joining his family for a Christmas dinner and uh, we do have uh, Louise Smith in the studio. Good to see you Louise, uh, welcome aboard. Thanks Craig, good to be in the studio. We've got a busy, busy month ahead so lots to talk about. Yeah exactly, uh, plenty of racing still going ahead all around the country at the moment and uh, while well, Ruapuna takes a break till the 21st of January. Well let's get straight into it. It was a massive night at the Racecourse Hotel in Motor Lodge, Ruapuna Speedway. We had the uh, Ryan Stone Memorial for the TQs featuring Cole Morrison and Peter Honeybell from Auckland. Uh, the V6 Wingless Sprints took on the Letton Curb and Channel Tri Series. The Modified Sprints had an enormous turnout with the uh, King of the South Series. And of course, the big highlight was the Hydrolink War of the Wings. And uh, there was plenty of highlights at the track, uh, certainly a lot to talk about uh, coming up. Okay, time to move on to Crash of the Week, brought to us by KH Fabrication. If you break it, he'll fix it. And uh, there were many spectacular sprint car crashes in the weekend. But the one that we're going to have a look at was Oscar Harcourt and Max Guilford coming together. Louise, what did you make of this? This is two very good young sprint car drivers, just kind of dealing with the same piece of real estate here coming into turn three, a very unfortunate turn of events for both of them. Yeah, we can see there, as you just said, uh, both fighting for the same piece of ground and it was Oscar Harcourt that came off worst in that incident there. Uh, difficult to know who was to blame uh, really there. I know that Max Guilford is a uh, hard charger and Oscar has got a whole heap of confidence at the moment. So. Uh, like you say, uh, two guys fighting for the same uh, piece of uh, ground, but a uh, pretty violent crash there for Oscar. Took off the top wing and uh, the front wing, and uh, we can just see him getting out of the car there. Good to see him getting out under his uh, own power. Okay, time to move on to the Pro Ben review of the night, and uh, the Court of Midgets is what we'll start with. And uh, right from race one, we've seen a, uh, a spectacular crash with Romeo Warren Webb hooking a wheel and flipping his car spectacularly. and. Uh, uh, the fallout of that was Jack Brownlee's ran into his car as, as it was falling to the ground, which uh, sort of uh, derailed his chances for the rest of the night. But uh, Louise, it was a pretty spectacular start, and uh, what did you make of the quarter midgets all night? We had a really big field, which was really cool to see so many Nelson cars travelling, and Greymouth cars as well, with the Thompson brothers of course, but obviously it was Malachi Webb that had the strongest night out of all of them, as well as some pretty solid performances, especially in the feature from Jackson Clark. Yeah, I thought Jackson was going really well. He held out Malachi for a couple of laps, and uh, Malico really had to work to get that feature race. Uh, time to move on to the TQs and uh, it was the Ryan Stone Memorial 17 lap feature and uh, this was another enormous field, uh, 24 competitors including two North Islanders. Well there's plenty of North Islanders here at Ruapuna tonight and uh, Peter Honeybell, uh, good to see you at the track. We know you're more as a midget car driver these days but uh, tell us what you're up to. Yeah so uh, I've obviously got presented the uh, great opportunity by the Morgan family to come run uh, their spare car for the uh, Ryan Stone which is on tonight. Um, Super grateful for the opportunity. I know the Morgans put it, like absolutely lovely cars together, and uh, being that we're lucky that um, we had no racing up home this weekend, there's a good chance to get some more laps in and uh, kind of maybe get a bit of a feeler for the uh, the Grand Prix that's down here and uh, the BT race later in the season. Another driver that's come down for the Ryan Stone tonight is Cole Morrison. Yeah, he's travelled all the way down from Auckland. Cole, good to see you at Ruapuna here, mate. Uh, what brings you down, and uh, what are you racing tonight? Yeah, no, cool. Thanks, man. Um, Tim just gave us a call and. Uh, he looked at the results from the end of last season up, no uh, up north and we won our championship or the club champ championship up north and he said uh, do you want to come have a spin in my car and I said sure thing. So yeah we had a look at it on Thursday and see what we're doing hopefully it goes well. So uh, it's always interesting driving someone else's car, how do you approach it mate? Are you going to go all guns blazing? Yeah we put the foot down first corner and that's it, that's, yeah, same shit different oval. <laughs> Louise, good to see a couple of Aucklanders travelling down for the Ryan Stone Memorial. Yeah, absolutely. It was already a massive field and you add some of those really good guys into the mix, it was really awesome to see them competing in such a special event. Yeah, well look, they had uh, four races in total and uh, Ben Morgan took out the first one with Jeremy Webb and Peter Honeybell uh, putting his nose up in for third. Second race was uh, Dylan Forsey and uh, Dylan's going particularly well at the moment uh, from Jeremy Webb, Kyle Glover. And Aaron Finlay took out a uh, heat of the uh, Ryan Stone. He'd be very pleased that 38C car is uh, improving every time he gets to the track. Uh, Tyler Warnock second, Jamie Booth third. And uh, the uh, Ryan Stone feature, which of course is fastest off the back, it was our uh, New Zealand champion Jeremy Webb who uh, took out the honours on a particularly difficult track, uh, followed by Rodney Thompson and Kyle Glover. Um, you were watching Dylan Forsey uh, in that feature. He, he was doing pretty well, Louise. Yeah, he was definitely on the charge. It unfortunately didn't go his way, just biking up into, into one there and, and having an unfortunate end to what was going to be a stellar night for him. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's coming along really well uh, as Dylan Forsey, and uh, he's a real professional driver and uh, wants to make the best of every lap that he gets at Ruapuna. Uh, it was a challenging track, uh, but uh, perhaps it's good practice for these guys that are going to Miani. They've got their uh, New Zealand title happening on the 13th and 14th of January. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to be a massive meeting, and I really hope that some South Islanders can kind of put their name on that podium as well. Uh, we know Ben Morgan's going, Jeremy Webb, of course, uh, Dylan Forsey, maybe Tyler Warnock, and there could be a couple of other uh, representatives from Christchurch going, and uh, we wish them all good luck up there. Okay, time to move on to the modified sprints, and 19 cars turned up at the track for the first round of the King of the South series and uh, it was Kate Warren that came out of retirement. Uh, we haven't seen Kate at the track for two or three years and uh, she took out her first two heats. Uh, that was pretty impressive, Lou. Yeah, it was definitely impressive. It was not what I expected at all, but she definitely didn't look like she'd been away from the seat for any time. No, it was uh, really exciting. The crowd really uh, was supporting uh, Kate. She captured the imagination of them and uh, she was driving that 42C modified sprint as well as ever. But it was uh, actually the Southlanders that took out the feature race and uh, Jaden Fraser travelled all the way from Invercargill and uh, he managed to uh, put on a heck of a race in the final with uh, Kate Warren, eventually getting past her and winning by almost half a lap. So uh, it was a great uh, event for Jaden Fraser taking out the first round of the King of the South series. So we move on to the V6 wingless sprints and it was the Letton Curb and Channel Tri-Series first round happening at the track and uh, Kirk Hawkins returned from his big trip in the North Island and uh, he was in great form. He took out uh, a heat race there and uh, Andrew Marker took out the second race as well as the feature so uh, that's continuing good form for Andrew Marker, the 51C car sponsored by Jim at uh, Power Tools. Other races to go well were Simon Moore and Mark Morris. Okay, time to move on to the midgets, and uh, the midgets were just a support class in the weekend. Uh, they only managed to get two races as uh, time constraints kicked in. Uh, no feature race for them, but uh, the two drivers that were most impressive, Liam McCubrey and Jack Lowe, and uh, Louise, Jack Lowe's going very well these days. He certainly is. Obviously, those extra laps he's getting in in the North Island are really paying off, and he's got a bunch more to come with a super busy Christmas schedule ahead of him. Yeah, and uh, certainly if you're going up north, you want to watch out for Jack, a uh, good Cantabrian boy, and uh, lots of people starting to see how good he is. He was the only driver prepared to go on the outside line on a fairly tricky track at uh, Ruapuna on the weekend. Well our feature class for the night was the Hydrolink War of the Wings and uh, 24 cars turned up at Ruapuna for an exciting night of uh, sprint car racing. We caught up with a few of the contenders before the meeting. Okay one of the favourites here in the War of the Wings tonight is the current War of the Wings champion Connor Rangi. Connor uh, it's a big field of uh, sprint cars here at Ruapuna. Uh, what's the plan for you? Yeah, it's awesome to see uh, so many cars turn up, so I think we're going to have quite a few for every round this year, so it's going to be really good. Um, for us, just take it one round at a time and and um, just collect points, you know, just try and win every race that we can, and, and the points just sort of sort themselves out. Um, we've won it now, so I'm not putting a lot of stress on myself. It was nice to get it done, um, so we can just go have some fun and, and see how we end up. Well, you've had a quick look at this uh, American, uh, Joel Myers Jr. What do you make of him, and uh, how do you uh, contend with him? Yeah, I think he's great. Um, very smooth behind the wheel, and you can tell he's done a lot of racing this year or, um, over his career. So it's really good to have a guy like that here, and I think he's definitely going to be a title contender, so we're, we're definitely going to have to um, be in our A game to beat him. OK, we've run to Stephen Taylor, and uh, you are the wild man from Wellington, mate, and uh, you've certainly got a reputation around here at Ruapuna. or of the wings uh, round one here at Ruapuna. What's your thoughts on how you're going to approach it? Take it as it comes, mate. Just put our best foot forward and see where we land at the end of the night. So, well, You had a great result up at Nelson recently. Uh, you took out the feature race. Um, you're up against Joel Myers Jr. What do you make of him? He's good, eh? He races clean and he's fast. He's young. He's got plenty of experience in him for his age. I think he did 75 shows last year so he's no slouch. Um, he'll be tough everywhere we go. He's a good kid and good family, good backing overseas. Joel, uh, you've had a couple of meetings now. Uh, what do you make of New Zealand and uh, what's uh, going to change for you tonight? Yeah, I think I've been pretty cool. Uh, definitely done a lot of driving since I've been here. So that uh, hasn't been too fun but uh, definitely worth it. You know, We ran really good uh, at Nelson last weekend. Uh, could have had, actually had a couple shots at the lead there and just couldn't really get around uh, Stephen there. So uh, hopefully bring on tonight and uh, get one spot better. Max, good to see you here at Ruapuna. You have been a regular uh, campaigner here. Uh, what brings you down here? Oh, we, we've had the weekend off up north. You know, there's nothing on, so we thought we'd get on the road and do some travelling. around Nelson last week, uh, ran fifth there with the with the Sunshine Classic and ended up here last, uh, earlier in the week and 
just been been hanging around, getting some practice in for the New Zealand title, really. Yeah, we thought you might be coming down just to suss the place out. We uh, know you're uh, better as a midget car driver. How's your um, sprint car transition gone? Uh, it's probably not started off as good as it should have. <laughs> like last year, it looked promising. We were decent and towards the end, and we were we were happy with where we were at. And we decided to go more full time wing racing than we are midget racing. We're still midget racing at Christmas time uh, for the internationals when they come down, and that's kind of really the end of our midget career at the minute in New Zealand. Um, I want to I want to focus more on wing car racing. I think there's more of a future for me in that than, than midget racing at the minute. Man, that was impressive. 24 cars in the pits, uh, Lou, and uh, action all over the track. Oh, 100%. The, the sprint cars are a massive crowd draw, and it was really cool to see so many of them in one place. It's just a taster of what's to come for, for the rest of the season. Yeah, of course, we're all building up to uh, the New Zealand sprint car title here, and uh, it really was a good workout for most of these guys. The track was a little tricky, but uh, you've got to, got to expect these things uh, with uh, titles coming up. Uh, you're not sure what you're going to be delivered but uh, if we move on to race one uh, Daniel Anderson took out uh, the first heat but uh, it was really a race between Joel Myers Jr and Dave Kerr that really enthralled the crowds and uh, Joel Myers Jr put a big move on uh, Dave Kerr and actually flipped him up and uh, the corner uh, turned to corner which uh, was good for the crowd but uh, Joel and uh, Dave uh, both went to the infield and uh, I seen them shaking hands so the 16 year old uh, certainly wasn't scared to mix it up there Lou. No, definitely not. He was um, he was just getting after it, and that's just what you have to do on, on nights like that. Connor Rangi showed how good a driver he is, taking out uh, the second heat of the War of the Wings, and uh, our third race was taken out by Matt Honeywell, one of the uh, crowd favourites at Ruapuna. Uh, he negotiated the track uh, pretty well and was convincing winning his heat race. Uh, Max Guilford, our North Island uh, traveller, he took out uh, race four, and uh, it was a good win despite being involved in that uh, crash earlier on. Uh, he looked fast and racy all night, Lou. Yeah, he definitely did. It was it was cool to see a North Islander kind of come down and test out the waters before the title. The time to move on to the feature race of the Hydrolink War of the Wings, and man, it was an exciting race. It did uh, go for a while, 45 minutes to get it finished, but uh, there wasn't one person in the stadium leaving. There was multiple crashes, good tight racing, and uh, lots of drama to play out. But it was eventually Joel Myers Jr., our 16-year-old Californian flyer, who navigated the very tricky track and uh, managed to win the race convincingly, uh, even though he did actually run out of gas half a lap from home. So uh, you could say he timed it perfectly, but uh, that was a great race to watch, Louise. It was very impressive, actually, and I think it, it was a long time coming for him. Um, you know, he, he got close his first couple of meetings here, but it was cool to see him finally pull one off. Well, it really was an impressive feature race at uh, Ruapuna, as we said before, the crowd staying half an hour beyond our uh, 10 o'clock curfew, and uh, Joel Myers Jr. joins the show right now, and Joel, uh, you must be pretty happy with that uh, feature race uh, in the weekend. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, you know, kind of going in, it's kind of, I uh, just didn't know what to think, just because we kind of started um, six, so it's kind of not like the front row starting spot like you'd always like, but uh, definitely just tried taking advantage of what we could and uh, came out on top. So how did you navigate your way around that tricky track? Because uh, certainly a couple of those corners there were very treacherous. Yeah, um, luckily kind of, uh, we have a track at home that kind of gets uh, very, uh, sort of kind of like the track was uh, Saturday. So kind of just did what we do there and um, just kind of took my experience I knew from going through the holes and um, try and go above them or, you know, just not go through them. Well, look, let's talk about the night for you. And it started off pretty well with uh, you being quick time in the time trial. Uh, t take us through that. Uh, the track was uh, a little lumpy then as well. Um, how did you navigate around so quickly? Uh, yeah, luckily at home, uh, we qualify every weekend. So it was kind of nice to have something similar to home. And I just knew I had to at least get one solid lap. And I messed up my first lap. So I knew just kind of try and lay down a good second lap. And uh, unfo uh, thankfully, we came out on top. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. 13.1 seconds round Ruapuna on a tough track is uh, fair hiking along. Well, look, uh, we seen you uh, then emerge uh, in a heat race with Dave Kerr, and uh, you guys were having a real battle for two or three laps there. You tried to put a move on him early, and then uh, you eventually did put a move on, but you tipped him up at the same time. Uh, tell us about that. Oh, yeah. Um, I actually uh, thought I could kind of get in a run, and I hit the water on the bottom of the track, and we actually had no brakes, and that was the first time I kind of found out we had no brakes is when I got into them. Something I hate doing, and uh, I apologize to him about it. And, um, just kind of went on from there. Just, I something I don't like doing, and it's not the way I drive. But um, things happen, I guess. 
Yeah, I don't think there was anything malicious in that at all. We watched you uh, actually shake hands uh, in the safety area a little uh, later on, and uh, I don't think Dave was uh, too worried about that at all. Uh, it was a fairly gentle uh, crash on uh, Dave's behalf. The car just uh, sort of spun around and, and landed gently on its roof. But then, uh, of course, you took on that 30-lap feature, and it went for a heck of a long time, and uh, <clears throat> I think you told us you actually ran out of gas at the end. Yeah, yeah. Um... And you know, with the four times you suck up so much fuel, so it's always a fuel saving game. So uh, I was trying to be on the fuel valve as much as I can, just try and save fuel under yellows and everything else. And the last about three laps, I started kind of feeling it uh, cut out, and I knew we were running out of fuel. So I uh, just tried being cautious and not be on the, the throttle as much as we could, you know, just trying to save fuel. And uh, actually coming to the track, the motor completely shut off, and it, uh, I thought we were kind of just done right there and wasn't going to be ache it, and then it kind of started right back up and uh, we were able to roll across the track. Yeah, well, it was, uh, wasn't was only you. I think Caleb Bourne ran out of gas uh, on the back straight before he finished as well. Uh, tell us, what's the reaction been like back at home? Uh, all your Californian fans, we knew uh, plenty of them were tuned into the live stream for sure. Uh, I'm sure your phone was going crazy as well. Yeah, for sure. Parents were pumped. Uh, Willie, uh, my crew chief back at home, was pretty ecstatic and uh, everybody was uh, all pumped out, and it was just cool to see. So what happens now, mate? Uh, we know that you've got the New Zealand title uh, in uh, in focus, and uh, how do you approach it? Uh, you must be feeling fairly confident. You've had a few laps around Rua Puna, and uh, you must feel like you're starting to know the place. Yeah, for sure. I'm um, just trying to get as many laps as we can, obviously, there before uh, we have the title. And Doug and uh, Root is coming out for the title, so that'll be uh, great. And Tanner, my crew guy back at home, is coming. So... I feel like we'll uh, be really good going into there and uh, just got to keep getting laps and add into the notebook. Well, that must be a massive advantage having Doug Roots coming over. We know him uh, better as uh, Buddy Coford's uh, set-up guy, I think it was, uh, many years ago, and uh, Buddy came over and took out the title. Uh, it'd be really interesting if you do take the title, you'd be the fourth uh, American to uh, win the New Zealand title, and uh, that would certainly be some success for a 16-year-old. Louise, uh, he's pretty impressive to watch, isn't he, this Joel Myers Jr.? Yes, yes, he is. It, it's, it's always going to happen. You know, Americans, uh, they come over and they kind of have a lot more, a lot more laps under their belt at such a young age, but it, it's definitely impressive. So um, you're a long way from home, Joel, but uh, how are you kind of adjusting to New Zealand life, you know, the summer change and, and everything that's going on here, aside from the racing? Oh uh, Yeah, it's uh, definitely been fun. I, uh, we've been going on the lake every week as we're home and um, everything else. Just definitely, definitely driving on the wrong side of the road um, and everything else. But uh, it's starting, you know, it's kind of feeling like home. Obviously, always going to miss home, but... Uh, it's definitely been fun. I'm sure the Andersons are really looking after you down there, and I hope that, you know, coming into Christmas and all the holiday seasons and stuff, that, that you have a really good time in New Zealand. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. They're taking great care of me, uh, great food and everything else. So, yeah, I can't thank them enough. I tell you what, Joel, uh, you got the best uh, part of the uh, South Island down there, mate. Te Aone at Christmas time. Uh, there's nothing uh, better, and it's pretty soon. I'm sure you're going to take plenty of photos home and uh, show the family. But uh, thanks for joining the show again, mate. Uh, always good to talk to you. You're a bit of a hard worker. You come from good stock. We know that. And uh, I'm sure that uh, your parents will be watching the next meeting. And incidentally, when is the next meeting for you, by the way? Uh, I think we're running Cromwell uh, December 30th and January 1st is the plan. Good stuff. All right, uh, Joel Myers joining the show. Always get good to get his thoughts. Uh, the young young 16-year-old Californian flyer making such a big impression at uh, Rua Puna Speedway. We're all going to watch him on the 4th and 5th of February. Triple X chassis are now in stock at Edge Parts and Performance. These outstanding sprint car chassis are winners with the World of Outlaws, proven in Pennsylvania, and raced on the ball rings of New Zealand. Edge Parts and Performance, proud stockists of racer-inspired, race-proven, triple X chassis and race components. The team at Edge Parts and Performance have got safety covered. They're proud stockists of Simpson safety products, helmets, head and neck restraints, harnesses, racing suits, gloves, shoes and more. Simpson safety products provide an unparalleled level of comfort, performance and protection. Come and check out their new range of Simpson suits, lightweight two layer SFI approved suits that offers flexibility and functionality all in one. They've also got the Red Devil carbon fibre lightweight racing helmet in stock. So looking forward to the next meeting at Rua Puna Speedway and it's the 21st of January. It's the K&T Drainage uh, TQ and Midget Car Championships for the South Island 
And then, of course, we've got the big one, the 4th and 5th of February, the New Zealand Sprint Car title brought to us by Access Man. And, of course, if you want to come along to that event, you might pay to get your tickets online, ruapunaspeedway.co.nz. Uh, make sure you get your tickets and guarantee yourself entry to the event. Louise, uh, it's pretty busy this time of year. What's your plans? Yeah, so we've got a long wait until Ruapuna again, but we're going to fill in the gap by heading up to Auckland and, and watching some international midget racing, which would be awesome. There's five meetings going on up there around that area, so it'd be really cool to kind of see Buddy come back in a midget, as well as Taylor Reimer, Justin Grant, and a, and a bunch of others as well that'll be strong competitors. Yeah, for me, I'm uh, also travelling up to the North Island uh, to watch those Americans, and uh, as Louise said, uh, Western Springs, Mount Monganui, that are oscillating between, between the two. Buddy Koford, Justin Grant, Taylor Reimer, and Ethan Mitchell, don't know much about Ethan Mitchell, but uh, I'm sure he's good enough to be invited out here and we'll see how he goes. Well, folks, that's the end of the show. And uh, to everybody that's supported us here, thank you very much. We all hope you have a uh, great Christmas break. And uh, we'll be back on the 19th of January, uh, highlighting our meeting on the 21st. And until then, keep your foot up it.